Good morning, sixth graders. Today's lesson is 12.2. Describe data collection. Our essential question, how can you describe how a data set was collected? Let's unlock the problem. One way to describe a set of data is by stating the number of the observations or measurements that were made. Another way is by listing the attributes that were measured. An attribute is a property or characteristic of the item being measured, such as its color or length. Jeffrey's hobby is collecting rocks and minerals. The chart gives data on garnets he found during a recent mineral hunting trip. So here they are. First, we're going to identify the attribute being measured, the unit of measure, the likely means by which measurements were made, and the number of observations. So let's describe the data set. Think, what property or characteristic of the garnets did Jeffrey measure? So we have garnets, there's the garnets, mass, garnet, mass. So one garnet, the mass is the weight is 7.2. Seven garnets, the mass is 4.6. 12, it's 4.3. So the attribute Jeffrey measured was the blank of the garnets. And that's the mass, because there's the mass, right? The unit used to measure the mass of garnets was... And if you look right next to here, they have the G for grams. To measure mass in grams, Jeffrey probably used a scale or a balance. The number of observations Jeffrey made was, well, we can look, one through six, seven, up oh, right there, 12. Would Jeffrey likely have gotten the same data set if he had measured a different group of garnets? Explain. The answer is no. Garnets found in nature would occur in many different sizes and shapes. So Jeffrey probably would not find 12 with the exact same masses as those in the first set. It'd be really hard to match up. Number two, what other attributes of garnets could Jeffrey have measured? Lots of possibilities. He could have done length, color, brightness, hardness, and so on. In this next activity, it's hands-on in class. And it says, in this activity, you will work with other students to collect data on the length of students' index fingers in your group. You will present the data in a chart. We can kind of do some of this virtually, so we're going to do that together. Describe the attribute you would measure. What unit would you use? So like it here is here, we're going to use the length of the student's index fingers, just like in the problem. And I would use inches or centimeters to measure. Problem two says, describe how you will make your measurements. So in this case, we would use rulers, just like in the picture there. And we would measure from the tip um, to the joint where our fingers and our hands. So there's the tip to the joint where the finger meets the hand. So that's what we would use. Next, it says, describe the data you will record in your chart. So I would have the name of each student in my group and the length of their index fingers in centimeters. Now, in the space here on the side of your journal, they want you to make a chart of your data. How many observations did you make? So you're going to make a chart. So you would make a chart something like this. You would have the students' names here and then the length of the fingers here. Depending on how many people you have in your group, that would be how many observations you made. So if we had just these four people, then you would say four. If you had six people in your group, you would say six people and so on. All right, share and show. Describe the data set by listing the attribute measured, the unit of measure, and the likely means of measurement and the number of observations. So here's my chart. 100 meters run data. I have my race. I have my time in seconds. Race and my time in seconds. So Greg's 100 meter race results. The attribute is the time to run the race, right? The unit of measure, right here, it's in seconds. And the likely means by which the measurements were taken would be a stopwatch. The number of observations looks like it goes up to seven. Next question, the Andrews family water use. So here we are, the daily water use. Looks like we have all these measurements. And it says daily water use, and right there, gallons, gal, gallons. So the attribute was the amount of water being used, 
The units, we already said, was gallons, and the likely measure was a water meter. Now the number of observations, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So they had 14 observations made. There's lots of different things that you can do to collect. Um, to actually practice, we could do weights of a cereal box, soup cans, number of family members, length of time to multiply two digits, uh, pets, number of pages in a book, and so on and so forth. So we will be practicing this in small group. Number four, I'd like you to do on your own. It says describe the data set by writing the attribute measured, the unit of measures, and the likely means of measuring, the number of observation recorded. So my attribute, right there, it says height of sixth graders. Pretty easy. Which one of these is it, right? The next one says unit of measure, right there. Look what they put, unit of measure, pretty easy. Likely means of measurement, well, what do you think they might have measured with? There's a hint, these right here go in those blocks. And then finally, number of observations, you can just count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. All right, that right there, I need you to finish that, and then you're gonna work on Think Central. Good luck, and if you need me, I'll be on the carpet.